in that day you will no longer ask me anything. Very truly, I tell you, my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Until now, you have not asked for anything in my name. Ask, and you will receive, and your joy will be complete. Though I have been speaking figuratively, a time is coming when I will no longer use this kind of language, but will tell you plainly about my Father. In that day, you will ask in my name. I am not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from God. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I am leaving the world and going back to the Father. Why did Jesus speak to people and even to his disciples in parables? Why didn't he choose clear and direct language that would explain everything to everyone without any doubts? In the Gospel according to St. John we read, I have spoken to you in parables about many things. However, the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in parables or metaphors but will openly reveal to you everything about the nature and essence of the Father. At that time, the world was not ready for such a revolutionary truth about salvation. The disciples did not come solely from intellectual backgrounds. Even the learned scribes often needed images to understand that what they complicated was as simple as tending a vine or caring honestly for a trusted lease. The same holds true today. Parables aid in better understanding new truths. But in this gospel passage, Jesus declares that the time of parables is ending and true and complete understanding will soon come with the final revelation. This also serves as a reminder that our relationship with God can and should be direct and personal without the mediation of scholars and theologians. Jesus invites us to a life that daily reflects simplicity, to a relationship with God that is as real as the simplest, most sincere prayer spoken in the quiet of our hearts. In today's world, it is easy to get lost in the flood of information. We live in a world where the truth often takes the form of colorful parables, not entirely understandable, ambiguous, and open to various interpretations. Sometimes it seems that we need a direct and clear message, simple as a steel road sign. In the 24th verse, Jesus said, You have never asked before, following my thinking and actions. But now I say, if you ask the Father in such a way, you will receive from him, so that your joy may be full. Here Jesus speaks of the simple act of prayer which has the power to transform our hearts and even external realities. Have we forgotten in our busy world how to ask in devotion and humility? Do we practice the skill of speaking to God as to someone who not only hears, but also responds? In verses 26 and 27 we read, From this day you will be able to address the Father in the way I do, and there will no longer be a need for me to plead for you before him. For the Father lives in friendship with those who befriend me and trust that I am from God. It is amazing how Jesus overturns our understanding of prayer. He says, I, I will not be your intermediary, but says, You have direct access to the Father because whoever is my friend is also the friend of the Father. We can ask God for anything. It's a bit like getting a VIP pass to the biggest festival of life we have direct access to the highest. Isn't it intriguing that the Father's love is not static, but dynamic and reactive? It responds to our love, faith, and trust. Yes, we can ask for anything, but will we receive everything we ask for? Of course, but only if it is good for us, as God's plan assumes. When Jesus speaks of having come from the Father and coming into the world, I am reminded of the description of the creation of the world in the book of Genesis, where light emerges from chaos. In the life 
death, and resurrection of Christ, we see the ultimate breaking of chaos by love, which restores order, meaning, and purpose. In the second chapter of the letter to the Philippians, we stand before the words, At the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the only true Lord of everything. Why should every knee bend at the name of Jesus? Is it not because this name symbolizes a love so immense that it sweeps away all doubts and fears from the surface of the earth? Jesus says that God loves in a special way everyone who believes in him. This is not love reserved for the chosen. It is love offered to anyone who opens their heart to it. When God hears the name Jesus, he smiles. Our Father sent his Son to save all of humanity, but only those who accept this gift will be saved. What about the others who, although loved by God, choose to separate themselves from the Father by their own choice? This is the sad truth of our times when people consciously choose to live without God. Therefore, our mission is to continually remind the world of what it loses by rejecting the good news about Jesus. The stake is the eternal life of our loved ones and friends. Jesus gave us a simple prayer that I use when I lack the strength to gather my own thoughts. The Our Father prayer is not just words. It is a call for thy kingdom come to become a reality here and now in our lives. When that kingdom comes, there will no longer be a need for teaching in parables, for everything will become clear. Let these words be a reminder and a call not only to prayer, but to a life in closeness with God, who loves us unconditionally and desires for us to be part of his kingdom. Through faith in Jesus, we have access to love and grace, which are like one-way tickets to eternity. Let this weekend be a time for us to discover the depths of the simple truths passed down to us by Jesus. Ask, believe, love, and see how your life transforms and fills with true, incomprehensible joy. Perhaps the time has come to stop treating faith as a parable and start living it for real. May God bless us all.